Hello, welcome to a special edition of Sports Interactive. I'm Joe Mahan. Sit back for the next hour because it's going to be a good one. We're going to be talking about the 11 times the New England Patriots went to the Super Bowl. So let's start right away. 1985. The Patriots go to the Super Bowl. The head coach, Raymond Berry. So in the playoffs, we'll start with the AFC wildcard game. The Patriots win 26-14 at the Jets. The next week in the division round, the Patriots beat the LA Raiders in Los Angeles 27-14. The week later, in the AFC Championship game in Miami, the Patriots beat Don Shula and Dan Marino 31-14, and that's in Miami. So in 1985, the Patriots are a wild card team. They win three games on the road to go to the Super Bowl. They beat the Jets at the Jets, L.A. Raiders at the L.A. Raiders, and Miami Dolphins in Miami. Then, a couple weeks later, <clears throat> Patriots fans, many of us remember this, many of us don't want to remember it. They get beat by the Bears, 46-10, to get absolutely crushed. That was the year... The Bears were 15-1. and one. Uh, So the Bears go on to win the Super Bowl. Mike Ditker is the coach. Buddy Ryan as the defensive coordinator. Walter Payton, uh, Jim McMahon, uh, the refrigerator Perry, uh, Wilbur Marshall. We remember all the names for Singletary from that great Bears team. Interesting thing about that 85 Bears team, they were 15-1. and one. Their only loss all year was to the Dolphins. So many people think that would have been the matchup, but the Dolphins didn't get it done at home. But many people think that would have been the dream Super Bowl with the Dolphins going up against the Bears again and uh, seeing what happens. But it didn't happen. So the Patriots, their first Super Bowl appearance, they lose. So now they're 0-1 in the Super Bowl. The next time the Patriots go to the Super Bowl, it takes 11 years to get back. 1996. Bill Parcells is the coach of the Patriots. Uh, in the AFC division round, the Patriots 28-3, they beat the Steelers. And that's at Foxborough. In the AFC championship game, the Patriots beat the Jags 20-6 uh, and move on to the Super Bowl. Uh, that was uh, Bill Parcells, again, was the coach. Drew Bledsoe, uh, the quarterback. And in 1996 Super Bowl, Patriots lose to the Packers 35-21. to That was the year Brett Favre got his ring. So it was disappointing for uh, Patriots fans that Drew Bledsoe didn't get a ring. Uh, you know, but it wasn't his fault. Uh, uh, where was some defense that day? That was a Bill Parcells, Bill Belichick team, and they gave up 35 points to Mike Holmgren's uh, Green Bay Packers and Mike Holmgren was obviously he was a part of Bill Walsh's staff with that West Coast offense so now the Patriots their first two trips to the Super Bowl they're 0-2 uh, and now moving forward the Patriots go to the Super Bowl in 2001 this was with Tom Brady their third time in the Super Bowl uh, Division round, they beat the Raiders at Foxborough 16-3. to uh, Raider fans and most NFL fans call that game the tuck rule game. Patriots fans call it the snow game. So Patriots win 16-13 in the snow. Most of us know the story, and Raider fans are still crying about it, saying, oh, that was their year. If it was their year, why did, didn't you have home games? Uh, so, and John Gruden has said the tuck rule wasn't the reason they lost that game. In that game, the Raiders couldn't make a fourth, and it might have been one or inches. And if they get that, they get the first down, they, uh, you know, maybe can ice that game. But Raider fans still talking about the tuck rule game, the snow game, Brady's first playoff win. And if you look at the highlights of that game you'll see when Brady scores a touchdown he gets all fired up and he spikes the ball and then goes rolling over in the snow Adam Benatari 
So that's really what started it all, uh, that, uh, that snow game. Now, next week in the AFC Championship game, uh, they beat the, uh, uh, the Steelers in Pittsburgh. In that game, Brady injures his ankle. Bledsoe comes off the bench. One, two, three. Three completions in a row, a touchdown. And uh, later on, the game got tight. Uh, Cordell Stewart uh, threw uh, a couple interceptions in that game. Slash, as you remember, really good player. Uh, so the Patriots go into Pittsburgh, win the AFC Championship game, and then meet the Rams, the greatest show on turf in the Super Bowl. And they beat the Rams 20-17. to Ty Law had a pick six in that game off Kurt Warner. And if you look at the highlights, it was Mike Vrabel who was in Kurt Warner's face when he threw it. So that was big. And just a side note, uh, Kurt Warner has a 1-2 Super Bowl record. In his two Super Bowl losses, he threw pick sixes. So those pick sixes will kill you because in a way it's a 14-point swing sometimes. So, uh, and... Uh, you know, after that was the, they beat the greatest show on turf. That was, I believe, uh, Patriots up to that point, our finest hour. Uh, that was when they had uh, U2 at the halftime playing the song, It's a Beautiful Day. And the next day on sports radio, they're playing that song, Patriots Super Bowl champions. So uh, that was the best of the best. Uh, so now that was the Patriots' third time in the Super Bowl. So now they got a Super Bowl win with Tom Brady, and Bledsoe got a Super Bowl ring because he helped, uh, obviously, in that AFC Championship game contributing. I remember back then <clears throat> on sports radio, that uh, people were saying, who's going to start the Super Bowl, uh, Brady or Bledsoe? Because Bledsoe did come off the bench, but they went with Brady. The rest is history, and, uh, you know, they got, they got that Super Bowl win. Okay. The next time the Patriots are in the Super Bowl for their fourth Super Bowl appearance, 2003, in the divisional round, 17 to 14 over the Titans. Uh, that was the game. It was freezing in Foxborough, and Adam Venateri kicked a rock to win the game. It was freezing up there, uh, and that was when uh, uh, Tennessee had a uh, fantastic quarterback, Steve Air McNair. Uh, really, what a great, great player. And then in the AFC Championship game, this I remember this uh, championship game. I was in a convention in Las Vegas and got to watch it. The Patriots beat the Colts 24-14 to in Foxborough. Uh, Peyton Manning had a number of interceptions. I believe Ty Law had two interceptions. That was Ty Law's finest hour. And then in the Super Bowl, the Patriots meet the Panthers, and they beat them in a shootout, 32-29. to Jake DeLome did a great job uh, that game. That was back and forth. What a shootout. Adam Vinatieri kicks another Super Bowl winning Super Bowl like he did against the greatest show on turf. And the Panthers coach uh, uh, has two Super Bowl losses with Carolina and Denver. Uh, good coach, but that, that's disappointing where you take a... a Two teams to the Super Bowl and come up short both times. Uh, but so now the Patriots uh, got another championship uh, with Tom Brady. The next year, Patriots go back to the Super Bowl, 2004. And those two years that they went to the Super Bowl, they had 14-2 and two records both years. So those were great teams. If you're a Super Bowl champ and you come back, the next year and have another 14-2 and season with everybody on your back, that was a fantastic team, that 2004. That was when they brought in Corey Dillon, who had like 1,597 yards, I believe, rushing, did a great job. Uh, and then two years in a row, the Patriots beat the Colts and Peyton Manning in the playoff game, uh, in the playoffs. The AFC Championship game in Pittsburgh, Patriots crushed the Steelers 41-27. It wasn't even that close. The Steelers had a 15-1 regular season. So that's twice the Patriots went into Pittsburgh and won an AFC championship game. And then in the Super Bowl, the Patriots beat the Eagles with Donovan McNabb and Terrell Owens and Andy Reid 24-21. 
another three-point win. So the Patriots secure the dynasty, three Super Bowls in four years. They cut the dynasty. Uh, you know, uh, Deion Branch was the Super Bowl MVP. So the Patriots have their dynasty, three out of four. That's uh, in 2004. So they got the dynasty. The next time the Patriots go to the Super Bowl, 2007. And Patriots fans, boy, I'm going to uh, fly through this season uh, quickly because I don't even want to remember it because the Patriots had a 16-0 and regular season. They go to, uh, in, the, uh, in the AFC uh, championship uh, the divisional round, they beat the Jags again, 31-20. to 20. So the Jags, I mean, they haven't won a Super Bowl, but they've been in a number of playoffs. So uh, they're, And I think they're on their way now with Doug Peterson. Uh, so they beat the Jags in the divisional round. The AFC Championship, they beat the Chargers. That was when uh, 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 Phillip Rivers plays with the ACL, and uh, LaDainian Tomlinson was kind of watching from the sideline with his helmet on, and... Uh, uh, and they beat the Chargers 21 to 12. Uh, they go to the Super Bowl, and of course, the Patriots lose to Eli Manning and the Giants 17 to 14. That's after having a 16 and 0 regular season. The Giants were 10 and 6, and in fact, the Patriots beat the Giants the last game of the season in New York. But uh, nightmare for Pats fans. Uh, they end up 18 and 1 instead of 19 and 0. Lose to a 10 and 6 team. Uh, and in that game, Tom Brady threw to Randy Moss a late touchdown that if the Patriots could have held him, you know, Randy Moss would have got a ring. And if you uh, look at the highlights, you'll see Teddy Bruschi and Junior Seau on the sideline getting fired up, saying, if we hold him on this, we got a championship. And maybe uh, Teddy Bruschi was saying to Junior Seau, you'll get your ring. But didn't happen. We know the rest of the story. Uh, Eli Manning, the helmet catch, absolute n nightmare, but the Giants got it done. Eli, uh, the Kingslayer, uh, you know, and uh, that Giants 10-6 uh, team, they beat the Buccaneers all on the road. They beat the Buccaneers, then they beat Dallas. That was the uh, year Dallas was 13-3. and Giants came in, spanked them. That was the year Tony Romo went to Cabo on the bye week with Jessica Simpson, if you remember. Giants come in and spank him. Tony Romo throws a, a interception in the end zone with three Giants around one Dallas receiver. And then uh, 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 and, and, and the Packers, they beat the, uh, the Giants, right? The Giants beat the Packers with Brett Favre in Green Bay. That was that freezing game where Tom Coughlin's face was so red, it was so cold. So the Giants in 2007 just get the job done. Win a championship. Eli Manning, Tommy Coughlin. I call him Tommy Coughlin. Great coach, Tom Coughlin. Uh, and, uh, and then they get that done. And then we're going to go on to the next time the Patriots go to the Super Bowl. Here we go again, 2011, and they meet the Giants again. But in the divisional round, the Patriots crushed the Broncos 45-10. to 10. That was when the Broncos had Tim Tebow as the quarterback. The AFC Championship game, uh, they beat Baltimore 23-20. to 20. And then in the Super Bowl, they lose to the Giants. And Eli, once again, 21-17. to 17. That was the Super Bowl where... Eli had that great pass down the sideline to Manningham. And that was the, also the Super Bowl where Wes Welker kind of had to reach back and it hit, hit him both in the hands and he, he dropped it. That was a game where Giselle Bunchen was saying, well, my husband has to throw the ball and catch it. So she was taking a shot at uh, Wes Welker. I think Brady took something off the ball because Welker was so wide open. But it hit him in both hands. If he would have caught it, they could have took a knee, but didn't happen. Uh, and, uh, and Eli outduels Tom Brady again, gets another ring. So Eli, the Kingslayer, two championships, both against Brady and Belichick. Just unbelievable. Okay, 2014, the Patriots go back to the Super Bowl. In the divisional round, they beat Baltimore 35 
to 31. Baltimore has been a thorn in the uh, New England side, just a tough, tough franchise, and uh, the Patriots got by them. Uh, and then in the AFC Championship, they crush Andrew Luck 45 to 7. That was in the Deflate Gate, and we we all know that story. Uh, but they just crushed the Colts 45 to 7. And, and then the Patriots win the Super Bowl 28 to 24 over Pete Carroll and the defending Super Bowl champion Seahawks. Uh, of course, that Super Bowl is known for the Malcolm Butler play, greatest play in Super Bowl history. Pete Carroll is known for making the worst call in Super Bowl history, and Russell Wilson makes the worst throw in Super Bowl history. Uh, they had Beast Mode, Marshawn Lynch. Uh, who had a TD earlier in the game, and he had a big catch down the sideline in that final drive. But the word was Pete Carroll didn't want Marshawn Lynch, beast mode, to be MVP. So that's why they sent in that play for Russell Wilson to throw it on second down at the one. Ridiculous. And even before that, on first down, Marshawn Lynch went from the five to the one. Uh, and it was a great tackle by Hightower, saving him from going into the end zone. But Pete Carroll gets all the heat for that bad call, and it seems like Russell Wilson gets off the hook. When that call came in, Russell Wilson was the Super Bowl winning quarterback from the previous year, so he had cachet. He could have said to his players, we're not running this. I'm, I'm, I'll do a quarterback sneak, uh, it, it kind of burrow in, and, and then it'll be third down. And uh, uh, nope, and they didn't want to give it to beast mode. Instead, on second down, they hike it in the shotgun going the other way. So just ridiculous call. Uh, Patriots, Tom Brady, we remember he was jumping on the sideline when, uh, when Malcolm Butler made the greatest play in Super Bowl history. And uh, to Pats fans, that's our good buddy, our good old buddy Pete Carroll, who was the coach of the Patriots for three years, didn't do that good of a job after Bill Parcells left him a, a great, great team. When Bill Parcells stepped down after going to the Super Bowl, Pete Carroll was our coach for three years. They went to the playoffs twice, never even close to uh, uh, realizing their potential. But Pete Carroll just, uh, he still must stare at the ceiling at night after that call. Because they would, you know, you're at the one yard line, you, you know, if you're betting in Las Vegas, you, you're kind of saying uh, you, your odds are good that you're going to win that ball game. They would have won back-to-back -back against Peyton Manning and against Brady. But, nope, they want to throw it on second second down. And when uh, when I see a Seahawks fan, if I got my Patriots hat on, for the first thing they look up, like, oh, boy. And, and so Seahawks fans are still, and they'll never get over that, uh, you know, that just the worst call and the worst throw in Super Bowl history by the Seahawks. But uh, Tom Brady... He got to uh, uh, four championships on that day, and he's now Brady had a four and two Super Bowl record, and uh, uh, but what a game against the Seahawks! Some people think that's the greatest Super Bowl of all time. Uh, 2016, the Patriots go back to the Super Bowl in the divisional round. They beat Houston 34 to 16. In the AFC Championship game, they beat the Steelers again. So ba Brady beat the Steelers in three AFC Championship games in his career. This one was in New England. Just crushed them, 36-17. to 17. That was a game Chris Hogan had a great game, and uh, Chris Hogan did a great job for the Patriots. Got a couple rings, played for a raw. It seemed like forever with that bad shoulder, so he was a game of Chris Hogan. And then they win the Super Bowl in overtime, first Super Bowl to go to overtime. They beat the Falcons. 34 to 28. Oh, after the Falcons were were up 28 to 3. Uh, Dan Quinn, the coach of the Falcons, second worst coaching job in Super Bowl history, right behind Pete Carroll. Uh, Matty Ice, Matt Ryan, uh, you know, up 28 to 3, and they were still running their offense. Kyle Shanahan was the offensive coordinator, uh, and uh, at uh, Julio Jones had that big catch late where they were in field goal position to win the game. Before you know it, they're at first down in field goal position. Two plays later, they lose 10 yards and 10 yards on a sack and a penalty. So now it's uh, third and, and 
uh, 30 or something, and um, you know they got a punt. So just and again, high tower making a big big play in a Super Bowl, and uh, uh, James White, Julian Adaman had the uh, Julian Adaman had one of the great catches in Super Bowl history. So they beat the Falcons. Uh, you know, like I said, down 28 to three. You would think the Falcons would have used the clock as their best friend. Because Dan Quinn started his career learning from Bill Parcells. And if Bill Parcells had a 28-3 to lead, he would use the clock as his best friend. Run, run, you know, because you run, you run the ball, it takes off 40 seconds. Run it again, takes off 40 seconds. Even if you run it again, it takes off 40 seconds and then punt. So I'm not complaining. I'm a Patriots fan, but the Falcons, really terrible coaching job. After it was 28-3, to the Falcons didn't hold the Patriots again once so uh just no defense uh you know uh it, i remember 28 to 3 who thought the patriots were going to come back but probably the greatest uh some people would say the greatest super bowl falcons fans must have been uh, uh just beside themselves uh blowing such a lead but couldn't get it done the falcons and then 2017 the patriots are back in the super bowl in the division round, they beat the Titans 35-14. to So you notice in Brady's career, a lot of playoff games against the Titans, the Jags, the Colts, the Steelers, a lot of the usual suspects uh, in the AFC. And the AFC Championship game, they beat the Jags 24-20. to That was the game uh, 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 Jalen Ramsey was talking a lot of smack before the game, and the Jags had a 10-point lead late, and... Uh, so Patriots got it done. They go to the Super Bowl against the Eagles with Nick Foles and Doug Peterson. And uh, they lose that Super Bowl. Absolute nightmare. Uh, Brady was going for six rings. Didn't get it done. Malcolm Butler was bu uh, benched. So people still don't know uh, what happened with that. Hightower was out. Uh, Brady throws for 505 yards. And puts up 33 points and loses. That was the most points ever put up by a losing team in the Super Bowl. So the defense was terrible uh, for the Patriots that day. Uh, uh, they were getting gashed by the Eagles running game. Uh, just an absolute disaster. Uh, Nick Foles, another uh, King Slayer, outdoors Brady. and uh, uh, So that was Belichick's worst hour. The uh, uh, losing to the, the Eagles with uh, Nick Foles and Peterson. Just a nightmare for Patriots fans. Uh, it was a bummer because a lot of Patriots fans wanted Brady to get to six rings. Jordan territory. Didn't get it done. Uh, so now Pat uh, so now Tom Brady's got a 5-3 and three Super Bowl record. And uh, uh, the next year, 2018... Patriots are back in the Super Bowl again. And uh, in the divisional round, they beat the Chargers with uh, Phillip Rivers 41-28. to But the game wasn't even that close. The Patriots were up 35 to nothing at the half. So they just crushed the Chargers. I was working that game, but uh, I remember uh, people, uh, you know, giving me the, uh, the highlights. I mean, the, uh, the updates of the scores. And then... In the AFC Championship game, they beat the Chiefs in Kansas City in overtime, 37-31. That was the game where uh, Tom Brady outdueled Patrick Mahomes. Uh, and they just got it done in Kansas City, uh, you know, winning that Super Bowl. And uh, then in the Super Bowl, they beat the Rams. Los Angeles Rams, 13-3. to uh, And I think that was Belichick's finest hour. Tom Brady gets to Jordan territory, six rings, and Belichick, six rings also. Uh, kind of like uh, early Phil Jackson when he, had, he got to six. He later got to 11 because he won five with the Lakers, also Phil Jackson. But uh, just amazing. That game, that Super Bowl, the Patriots against the Rams with Sean McVay. It was 3-3, three to three, uh, like five minutes into the fourth quarter. So that was a nail-biter. 
I remember then I was living in Las Vegas and I was watching the game standing up in a casino with another Patriots fan I knew, and we were, uh, you know, uh, nervous wrecks. 13-3, to but the Patriots scored the next 10 points of that game to, to get it to 13-3 to after being 3-3. to They had those great drives with Edelman and Gronk, and uh, Sony Michelle did a great job his rookie year, uh, you know, helping uh, Brady... Uh, you know, and now Brady's six, got a six and three Super Bowl record. After that game, Edelman's hugging Brady, saying uh, Jordan territory, Jordan territory. So, uh, so that was the eleven trips the Patriots made to the Super Bowl. So now we'll just go in more uh, in more detail. We'll go back to their first Super Bowl again in '85. So that was uh, uh, Raymond Barry was the coach, did a great job. Raymond Berry was a Hall of Famer receiver for the Baltimore Colts, uh, with Johnny Unitas, considered one of the great uh, receivers of all times, got uh, championships. Uh, so Ray Berry did a great job. In that run uh, in 85, the Patriots were the wild card team, and they won three games on the road uh, at the Jets, at the LA Raiders, and at the Dolphins. Good story when they in the division round when they beat the L.A. Raiders. Uh, after the game, Matt Millen uh, threw a punch at uh, Patrick Sullivan. I think Patrick Sullivan might have came over and talked some smack, and you, you could still see the uh, the photograph online where he just clocked him. And later on in the locker room, Howie Long says to Matt Millen, "Do you know who you just slugged out there?" And he said, "No, who?" And he said, "That was the general manager." He was also the general manager and the owner's son, Patrick Sullivan. But uh, just an amazing win, uh, beating the Raiders. And that was a good Raider team. Uh, and then, of course, in the uh, AFC Championship game in Miami, they beat the Dolphins 31-14. to Dan Marino and the Dolphins did not show up that day. You're at home. Uh, you know, you, you, you know, you've got the home field advantage. You've got the chance to go to the Super Bowl. Just didn't get it done. Uh, you know, Dan Marino, disappointing that he never could get a Super Bowl championship. He had one Super Bowl appearance, and he got out by Joe Montana. So, uh, and then, of course, absolute nightmare, the 1985 Super Bowl. Patriots just get crushed 46-10, to lose to the 15-1 Chicago Bears. And the funny thing about that game, the Patriots scored – the fastest points in Super Bowl history. Walter Payton fumbled, and the Patriots uh, kicked a field goal. So basically, after uh, uh, the Patriots kicked that field goal, uh, Chicago outscored them 46-7. to Because later in the game, they benched Tony East, and they brought in Steve Grogan, and he led them to a touchdown. Uh, so that was a you know absolute nightmare for the Patriots. The first time they go to the Super Bowl, getting crushed, and then that was 1985. And then moving forward 11 years, 1996, they go to the Super Bowl with Bill Parcells as the coach. Uh, and then uh, you know, and that was the Super Bowl. They lose to the Packers 35 to 21. That was the Super Bowl. Brett Favre gets his ring. Reggie White gets his ring, Mike Holmgren. So it was a good Packer team, but, you know, like I said, that was a Bill Parcells, Bill Belichick, Patriots team. And how about some defense? Giving up 35 points in a Super Bowl, uh, that's not going to get it done. But so very disappointing for Patriots fans. Their first two times in the Super Bowl, they come up short. And then Tom Brady's first time, the third time Patriots go to the Super Bowl, uh, that was Tom Brady uh, leading them there. And, of course, Tom Brady's first Super Bowl win was against the Raiders in Foxborough in the snow game. That was the last game to be played at the old Schaefer Stadium. Uh, uh, you know, they had so many names for that stadium. That stadium was one of the recognized as one of the worst stadiums in the league. It had aluminum seats, benches we'll say, not even seats. Uh, and then the next year, of course, they moved across the street, same grounds, Gillette Stadium. The beautiful Gillette Stadium was built. But uh, the AFC Championship, 
was really good after they beat the Raiders. The AFC Championship game in Pittsburgh, Tom Brady injures his ankle, and Bledsoe comes off the bench and leads them to the Super Bowl. The game got tight at the end, and Bledsoe almost turned into Bledsoe. Sometimes Bledsoe would force it in there. But Cordell Stewart threw two interceptions. Uh, and, uh, you know, so now they go on to the Super Bowl. The Patriots face the greatest show on turf, the Rams. Now, the Rams, two years earlier, had won a Super Bowl. So now that they win that Super Bowl against the Titans and Steve McNair, two years later, they're back in the Super Bowl. And the Rams are talking like there's just some kind of dynasty. They had one championship. Like if they would have won this, they would have won a dynasty. They would have been a dynasty. But it didn't happen. The Patriots won 20 to 17. Uh, Adam Venateri kicks him into history. Uh, like I said, that tie law pick six. Uh, that was big because those will kill you in games. And, uh, you know, uh, the great Dick Vermeil was the coach of that. Uh, no, ex ex in fact, Dick Vermeil coached the Rams when they beat the Titans. Then they moved him out for the offensive genius, Mike Martz. So Mike Martz lost the Super Bowl to Brady. Uh, Dick Vermeil won his ring, uh, you know, a few years before when they brought in uh, Kurt Warner. Uh, Dick Vermeil, class act. Uh, he also took the Eagles to a Super Bowl uh, way before that. It took 14 years off, Dick Vermeil. Uh, he, uh, you said he was burnt out, and he was uh, doing college football, announcing, doing a great job. So I like Dick Vermeil, class act. Uh, and, you know, he's got a Super Bowl ring, so good for him. So that's 2001. And then recapping 2003 when the Patriots go to the Super Bowl that was a really shootout game 31 to 29 Jake DeLome did a great job but again Adam Vanateri kicks a field goal right near the end with time running out and they win another Super Bowl uh, you know uh, uh, just a great great game good Super Bowl so now at this time Brady's got 2-0 Super Bowl record uh, I, I can't think of the name of uh, the coach of the Panthers, but he also took, so he took Carolina to the Super Bowl, and later on he took Denver to the Super Bowl, that coach. That was when Denver uh, got crushed by Seattle, I think 43-8. to eight. Uh, So, but good Super Bowl, and it worked out for the Patriots uh, beating the, the Panthers. And then 2004... The Patriots go back to the Super Bowl, and they beat the Eagles. That was when the Eagles had uh, Donovan McNabb, Terrell Owens, Andy Reid, Deion Branch of the Super Bowl MVP. They secured the dynasty, three out of four. So if you go on YouTube, you'll see Teddy Bruschi holding up the paper, dynasty. So, uh, you know, so that was unbelievable. The Patriots get a dynasty, three out of four. Uh, so they, the Patriots won it in 2003 and 2004. Both years, they were 14-2. and two. So that's very impressive to win two Super Bowls in both years, have a 14-2 record. Uh, so, you know, that was uh, unbelievable. So Patriots now, they had a 3-2 and two Super Bowl record after that. And then in 2007, that was when they got beat by the Giants. Patriots had a 16-0 regular season record, uh, but, you know, they just didn't get it done against the Giants in that Super Bowl. An interesting thing, the Giants coach, Tom Coughlin, he worked with Bill Belichick under Bill Parcells, so Tom Coughlin wasn't, uh, uh, you know, uh, enamored with Bill Belichick. He worked with them. So, uh, you know, Tom Coughlin, great coach. So Coughlin wins the Super Bowl in 2007. Uh, Coughlin did a great job when he was with the Jags, uh, building that franchise up. Uh, they, got, you know, got to an AFC championship game. Interesting thing about Tom Coughlin, when he was the coach of the Jags, who did he send into retirement? Hall of Fame coach and a Hall of Fame quarterback. Jimmy Johnson and Dan Marino. The Jags crushed the Dolphins. I believe it was 62-7. Dan Marino retired after that, and Jimmy Johnson retired. 
One thing about Tom Coughlin, he beats arrogant coaches. Now, you know, some people will say Bill Belichick's arrogant. Jimmy Johnson, Jim Harbaugh. You notice Bill uh, Tom Coughlin goes in and he beats these arrogant coaches. So Tom Coughlin's a great, great coach. Two Super Bowl rings. Can't take anything away from him. That Giants team, Michael Strahan, who great player, but every time I see him on TV, I just think of that Super Bowl. So very disappointing for uh, Patriots fans. I remember when the Patriots were in that Super Bowl going for undefeated season, uh, and I, I was saying to Patriots fans, just win that game, the undefeated season. And I said, I don't care if you turn into the Detroit Lions for the next 20 years. But they didn't win that Super Bowl in 2007 against the Giants, but it all worked out because Brady got the six rings with the Patriots, Michael Jordan territory. And then 2011, once again, the Patriots meet the Giants in the Super Bowl and get beat. Eli Manning, just ice water in his veins. Tom Coughlin, uh, you know, that was that game where Eli threw that great pass down the sideline to Mario Manningham. So Eli has two Super Bowl championships. His brother Peyton has two Super Bowl championships. So amazing, amazing. If, if the Manning brothers would have both became professional baseball pitchers, how many Super Bowls would Tom Brady have had? Because they were something, the, the Manning brothers. I think Tom Brady's the greatest quarterback of all time. Joe Montana, number two. And I think the third greatest quarterback of all time is Peyton Manning. And I'll tell you why. We all know his regular season uh, uh, accomplishment. But think about Peyton Manning. He's got a 2-2 two and two Super Bowl record. Peyton Manning went to the Super Bowl four times with four different coaches. That's unheard of. He went 1-1 one and one with the Colts and 1-1 one and one with the Broncos. So Peyton Manning, I uh, mean... If uh, a coach like Joe Gibbs, Joe Gibbs won three Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks, none of them Hall of Famers. Joe Theismann, Doug Williams, and Mark Rippon, good quarterbacks, but I'm just saying if, if uh, like a Joe Gibbs or, uh, uh, you know, uh, some of these other uh, great, uh, would have had a Peyton Manning, Tony Dungy's a great coach, but he was a defensive coach. But that's why I think Peyton Manning's the third best quarterback of all time, because he went to four Super Bowls with four different coaches. Absolutely unheard of. Peyton Manning, class act. Later on, when Peyton Manning went to Denver, Patriots fans remember, Patriots fans were having big struggles against Denver in, those, in some playoff games. So at first, Brady was beating Manning in playoff games, and then later in the career, Manning was beating Brady. So Peyton Manning, class act, just... One of the finest. Uh, we'll have to see what, what he does. Uh, if he wants to be a general manager or an owner, uh, sky's the limit for that guy. Peyton Manning, just class act and uh, just fantastic. I remember he was the number one pick in the draft, and number two was Ryan Leaf. And at the time, people were saying, boy, they were thinking of taking Ryan Leaf over Peyton Manning. But uh, they, were, uh, they would ask Peyton Manning, uh, oh, ask him a question. You know, football fans remember this, and he'd give that Peyton Manning answer. Well, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be work hard. I'll be in the facility. And they asked uh, Ryan Leaf before the draft, oh, what are you going to do when you get your bonus? He says, I'm going to Vegas. So some people said, well, I think we'll, we'll go with Peyton Manning. Uh, and, the, and the interesting thing about Ryan Leaf, he started out his career 2-0. and His first two starts, he wins. And then within two and a half years, he's out of the league. And that's the number two pick in the draft. When Bledsoe was picked number one overall, Rick Meyer was picked number two. And Rick Meyer had a decent career, not as good as Bledsoe. But uh, Bledsoe was a fantastic uh, player. Uh, picked number one overall. He's got a ring, got another Super Bowl appearance. Uh, quick uh, Patriots trivia question. How many Patriots or named Patriots that were drafted number one overall? Jim Plunkett was drafted number one overall, and he got two Super Bowl rings with the Raiders. Uh, Drew Bledsoe, drafted number one overall. Kenneth Sims, defensive lineman, they called him Game Day. Kenneth Game Day Sims, because he didn't like to practice. 
Irving Fryer was picked number one overall by the Patriots. Uh, you know, he had that great career at Nebraska, uh, you know, and they picked him uh, uh, number one overall. And uh, so the Patriots have had some, uh, you know, three quarterbacks with Bledsoe, uh, Jim Plunkett, uh, you know, picked number one in game day, Urban Fryer. Uh, I'm trying to think, uh, was there a uh, Bledsoe Plunkett? I think that was it as far as number one overall. You got to really stink to get the number one pick. When the Patriots had the number one pick, they were one in 15 with Rod Russ, and that's when they had the number one pick. They brought in Parcells, and he used that number one pick to take Drew Bledsoe. So now let's uh, go into a little more detail about the 2014 Super Bowl. That was the Super Bowl where the Patriots beat Pete Carroll and the Seahawks, the defending champs, because the year before, the Seahawks crushed Denver 43-8. to So... Again, that Super Bowl is known for Malcolm Butler, uh, Pete Carroll, worst call in Super Bowl history, Russell Wilson, worst play, throw in Super Bowl history. And, uh, you know, they didn't want to give it to Beast Mode, Marshawn Lynch on the one-yard line. Uh, Patriots fans aren't complaining, but just absolute disaster. Uh, in that game... Russell Wilson threw a pass, and we remember it was bobbled, and they caught it, and Malcolm Butler pushed the guy out of bounds at the five. Then they ran it on first down to beast mode. Beast mode went from the five to the one, and then that's when all confusion happened because Pete Carroll thought that Belichick was going to call a timeout, and he didn't, and it wasted 40 seconds. If you look at that on YouTube, you'll blow your mind because Seattle had second down, at the one yard line, plus a timeout and over a minute left. They had everything there. They could have called the timeout, say, slow down, call a timeout. No, they wasted 45 seconds because they thought Belichick was going to call a timeout. What Belichick did was he just left his defense on the field and he said, just play base defense. Uh, because Belichick is known for, he'll let like Josh McDaniels and, and uh, you know, Defensive coordinators run the defense, and it's a lot of times Belichick's looking at the other coach. And he obviously uh, did a great job in that, uh, you know, with the Malcolm Butler. You go, but Pete Carroll and uh, Bevel was the offensive coordinator for Seattle, and Russell Wilson must have been saying, who's this guy, undrafted rookie Malcolm Butler? So we, we, we could take him on. Oh, but if you watch that play, Malcolm Butler's in the back. Browner, who he played for Seattle the year before and helped them get a ring, now he's in the Super Bowl uh, with the Patriots. He turned around like this, and he said to Malcolm Butler, the pick play's coming. And you can see on that play, Browner doesn't let his the receiver go anyway. He kind of stops like that. The other receiver makes the play. Malcolm Butler breaks for it, and the rest is history. Uh, you know, considered one of the great Super Bowls that uh, – beating Seattle and Pete Carroll uh, is Patriots fans, or I like to say Pete Carroll is one of Patriots fans' best buddies. Another great buddy for Patriots fans is Dan Quinn. The next year, 2016, uh, Dan Quinn, the Falcons were up 28-3. to I was living in Las Vegas then. I remember watching that at a casino. Uh, and just a nightmare, 28-3. People are getting on me at the bar. Oh, you know, I wasn't drinking it. But then I said, aren't you going to have any? I said, nah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to watch the game. And then when I said, oh, I'll have a couple. Uh, if they when, when it started getting close, I said, oh, I think I'll have a couple when the Patriots started tying it up and uh, <laughs> things like that. But still can't believe it happened. You're up 28-3. to three. Uh, The Falcons should have used... Uh, the clock as their best friend. But the rest is history. Just unbelievable. <clears throat> Julian Edelman in that game makes one of the uh, most famous catches in Super Bowl history. Dante Howard, Dante Hightower, <coughs> excuse me, sacks Matty Ice, Matt Ryan. That was when uh, put him back out of field goal range. James White. Fantastic champion for the Patriots. Um, 
And then Tom Brady <clears throat> gets that championship uh, over the Falcons. And then in 2017, this was kind of my favorite. Uh, well, no, 2017, I was going to say it was 2018 was my favorite Super Bowl. Certainly not 2017 because 2017 was when the Patriots lose to Nick Foles and the Eagles. I call them Folesy. Because I got respect for Nick Foles. What a playoff run that was. <clears throat> um, nightmare for the Patriots. Tom Brady throws for 505 yards and loses. Puts up 33 points. <clears throat> Ridiculous benching Malcolm Butler for that game. Malcolm Butler proved in 2014 Super Bowl against Seattle that big time spots... He's a big-time player. And to not let him play in a Super Bowl after what he did in the other one is just ridiculous. Now, I could see maybe benching him for a first few series or the first quarter, but they were, when the Patriots started getting gashed, put him in. I mean, just that was when Belichick was at his uh, utmost in arrogance and that loss. Brady was not happy. A lot of people said that was one of the reasons Brady wanted out after that Malcolm Butler being benched Super Bowl. Uh, and don't forget, LeGarrette Blunt was now on Philadelphia because he helped the Patriots get a ring against Atlanta the year before. So now uh, LeGarrette Blunt is, is on Philadelphia, and he was just gashing the Patriots in that game. So that must have been uh, nice for him. He went to Super Bowl one year with the Patriots against the Falcons, and the next year... He goes to the Eagles and beats the Patriots uh, in a Super Bowl. So, little Garrett Blunt, uh, good running back. Good run. For someone that big, really, when he was on his game, had, had a lot of speed, good footwork, and uh, he was just a good back. Played at Oregon. But uh, <clears throat> Garrett Blunt, Blunt, good player. Patriots had some really good players, uh, running backs, during their Super Bowl years. Uh, my nephew and I, we still bring up the great Kevin Falk. Uh, fantastic player. Runner and a catch. And a, he was, uh, like Garrett, uh, Kevin Falk was as good as a receiver as most receivers in the league. And he was a running back. And then they bring in Corey Dillon from Cincinnati. Does a great job. Uh, you know, later on, like Garrett Blunt. Uh, you know, they didn't really have... Uh, James White. The Patriots really didn't have Hall of Fame running backs in their franchise history, but they had good running back. Corey Dillon was on is on the borderline of making the Hall of Fame because he had some good years in Cincinnati. Then I think he said, "Get me out of here." And they, and Patriots. He went to the Patriots. Did a fantastic job, uh, uh, Corey Dillon. And now, <clears throat> in 2018, this was when the Patriots. Beat the Los Angeles Rams 13 to three. That was Belichick's finest hour. Tom Brady gets the six rings. Julian Edelman congratulates him after the game, saying Jordan territory, Jordan territory. So in sports, when you get the six rings, that's Michael Jordan territory. So it's interesting uh, in sports. Uh, you know, Jordan had that six and zero with with uh, Phil Jackson, Scottie Pippen, but. Uh, Vince Lombardi has a 5-1 championship record in the finals. Greg Popovich, 5-1. 49ers, 5-2. See how it's tough to get into that 6. That 6 is magic. Uh, so that's why I was bummed out when the Patriots lost to the Eagles and Brady didn't get to 6 rings, but he got to 6 uh, the next year. So... Uh, 49 has had their chance. They had a 5-0 Super Bowl record, and then they lost their next two times in the Super Bowl. They lost with the, uh, Colin Kaepernick in that game, and then they lost with Jimmy G in that game. So uh, Belichick's finest hour. The uh, Patriots beat the Rams 13-3. Uh, you know, that game was 3-3 into the fourth quarter. Uh Wade Phillips did a great job as the Rams defensive coordinator. Uh, I mean, but the Patriots scored the last 10 points of the games, two drives, one touchdown, and, and then a field goal. 
But uh, Wade Phillips did a great job as a defensive coordinator for the Rams. Wade Phillips was the coach when the Cowboys went 13-3 in 2007. That was the game when uh, Tony Romo went to Cabo, that playoff run when the Giants came in and spanked him. So Wade Phillips, uh, good coach, you know, coached at uh, Dallas, uh, Denver, um, and Buffalo. So he's a, re he's a lifer. And, of course, Wade Phillips' coach was the cool Bum Phillips. Bum Phillips was the coach of uh, Earl Campbell. So, uh, so that wraps it up. The Patriots, 11 trips to the Super Bowl. We went through it twice. So, uh, you know, went through the, uh, uh, the Super Bowls twice. And now that I'm back at the beginning again, 1985, let's make a few points about 85. Mike Ditka gets a ring. And Mike Ditka won a Super Bowl ring with Dallas, and he also won uh, NFL championship before the Super Bowl era, I believe, on that Chicago team. I have to check that. But I do know he's got a Super Bowl ring with Dallas. I don't know if he was on that. Uh, I don't think he was, but it's possible he was on that 63 Chicago team that won the NFL championship. But either way, Mike Dick has got a uh, Super Bowl ring as a player, and he's got a Super Bowl ring as a coach. And there was that big rivalry because Buddy Ryan was running the defense, and that was the Super Bowl. After it, they picked up, the players picked up, Mike Ditka and the defensive players picked up Buddy Ryan. And then Buddy Ryan went on to have a very good career uh, <clears throat> coaching the Philadelphia Eagles. They never got to a Super Bowl, but they were in the playoffs, winning records. Uh, Buddy Ryan's a good coach, and it took years, but Mike Ditka finally said recently, because him and B Buddy Ryan, I guess they just didn't like each other. But uh, Mike Ditka did say, to his credit, he said, you know what, I never won another Super Bowl with Buddy Ryan, and he never won a another Super Bowl without me. Not that saying they should have stayed together because Buddy Ryan did deserve his own shot, but boy did those two have a rivalry. But Buddy Ryan built that great 46 defense with the Bears. So dominant. <clears throat> uh, you know, Patriots were outmatched. I mean, who knows? I mean, just, you know, but it's something they were saying the, uh, the Bears were so dominant the defense, but What's up with the Patriots giving up 46 points? Uh, so Jim McMahon wasn't that good. So just Patriots just ran into a wall in that Super Bowl. Uh, you know, Mike Ditka, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, Raymond Berry, the coach of the Patriots, did a great job. That was the year they would call it squish the fish when the Patriots beat the Dolphins in the AFC Championship game. <clears throat> Very disappointing. For Dolphins fans, <clears throat> for Dan Marino, he went to one Super Bowl, 0-1. It's too bad because he's one of my favorite players, Dan Marino. Even though I'm a Patriots fan, I know it's Miami, they're in our division, but it was just hard not to like Dan Marino. Getting rid he was so far ahead of his time, throwing for 5,000 yards in 1984. Uh, just unbelievable. That, you know, I kind of think he played... He, he would have been better playing in this era. Uh, who knows what he would, would have been doing. Because Dan Marino, he had bad knees, but he was good in the pocket because he could shuffle and make room in the pocket. He, you know, he certainly wasn't a runner, but he had really good feet and, because he could shuffle in the pocket. Uh, you know, Dan Marino, one of the best. Quick story about the Dolphins. On a Monday night game, this is during the 80s, uh, Don Johnson from Miami Vice is on the sideline before the game. So Dan Marino goes up to Coach Shula, and he says, Coach, this is Don Johnson from Miami Vice. And, and Coach Shula says, whoa, you guys are doing a great job. He's thinking he's re a real cop from Miami. He didn't know it was Don Johnson. And Don Shula's got enough to worry about, uh, you know, as far as he doesn't know who's the big star on TV. But just a good story, uh, Don Shula, one of the great coaches of all time. Belichick right now I think needs 22 more victories to pass Don Shula. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, Don Shula, one of the greats, who Don Shula was the coach of the Baltimore Colts when they lost Super Bowl III to Joe Willie Namath. And the Jets. And the Jets have not been back to the Super Bowl since 1969. That is amazing for a New York team, biggest market, 
But uh, I'm not complaining. I'm a Patriots fan. But the Jets, at some point, it, change ownership. Uh, just do not get it done. The Giants do. The Giants have a 4-1 and one Super Bowl record. Jets have a 1-0. and oh. But uh, we, I'm going to wrap up the show. It's been a while. I've been preparing for the show for a long time with my notes. But I just didn't have a chance to do it. But got it done today. Uh, Sports Interactive special about the Patriots' 11 trips to the Super Bowl. And who would have thought it uh, after these uh, 20 years with Brady and Belichick that now the Patriots are right up there with the Steelers and the Cowboys and the 49ers and the Packers as one of the great franchises in NFL history. And just as a side note, when Brady leaves the Patriots, he goes gets another ring with Tampa. So Tom Brady's the GOAT. Patrick Mahomes has a long way. Now they're saying Patrick Mahomes is the gold. He's got a 2 and one Super Bowl record. Uh, 49er fans are saying, oh, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Joe Montana's 4-0. So Patrick Mahomes, uh, I, who's fantastic, but, uh, well, if he can get to Brady, I don't think so. He's got a 2 and one He's got to win five more Super Bowls to tie Brady. So uh, we'll see. Patrick Mahomes is a great talent, obviously, but Tom Brady's the GOAT of football, not just the greatest quarterback of all time. Tom Brady's the greatest football player of all time. And the second best, I'm going to say Jim Brown. But hope you enjoyed this show about the Patriots. 11 trips to the Super Bowl. Beautiful 6-3 and three Super Bowl record. Now the Patriots have gone to the Super Bowl 11 times. They have a 6-5 and five Super Bowl record. So Patriots fans, we'll take that. And hopefully uh, in the next seasons or two, Patriots will be right back where they belong, controlling their division, getting buys, and, and going on to winning more Super Bowls. So I'm Joe Mahan, diehard Patriots fan. Hope you enjoyed this show. See you next time.